Part in Glass Racing. We have in the studio today a uh, live guest, uh, Jim Pippo from Whitehall Stable. And a little later on, we'll be joined by uh, Steve DeBudewitz from uh, Grade 1 Racing. We'll be talking about the Breeders' Cup. And about 10, uh, 10, 10, 10, 15 or so, um, we'll expect to get to your phone calls and emails. But first, uh, Jim, we want to welcome you back to the show. Uh, you know, you're a great supporter of the network, supporter of all the shows here. And, uh, you know, Whitehall Stable is locally based. You, you and your team have been working hard. Uh, you got some runs in at Saratoga. Uh, you know, I was uh, fortunate enough to go to your uh, open house uh, uh, before the season and see some of your good two-year-olds and talk with both Linda Rice and Seth Benzel. So, um, you know, we've been wanting to have you in here for an update. So here it is, the opportunity to talk to folks about, uh, first of all, uh, you know, your thoughts on yesterday's racing from a, from a fan and, uh, and an owner. And, and I know where your thoughts are as a, as a partnership manager. And then we'll talk about Whitehall. Okay, thanks. Good morning. Thanks again for what you do at OTB. I love you guys. You're always there for us. But anyways, no, I, I watched the Breeders' Cup for the last two days, and, you know, I love the action. we got to talk about the fight a little bit, right <laughs> out of the box. And uh, I think Calvin got surprised when he kind of backed Castellano right in the corner. If I saw it really right, I think Castellano might have popped him real quick. Wow. But that elevated. But anyways. But there, there, there we go. You know, there's a part of me that immediately said, <laughs> the this, is, love this, the fight. Is, this is exactly what racing needs. The marriage of NASCAR and WWF. And well, then we all knew it wasn't well, what I, I heard, needed. And I can't remember. I think it was Jay Privman from the Daily Racing <laughs> Forum had it right. Uh, we've gone from the sport of kings to the sport of Don King. <laughs> Okay, keep going. No, no. When I watched the big race in Yada, you know, your heart goes out to, to that whole team in many ways. But me being an owner, you know, every day we experience with these young horses things backstage. And uh, it just takes time to let these individuals really tell you where they are. And if I'm right, I think Zenyatta didn't start a racing career, mm -hmm. I think, late November of her three-year-old campaign. But mm -hmm. we see that with our young horses. And I emphasize this, and I think... Me as an owner, you know, when we manage Whitehall Stable, when we get new investors, it's trying to explain to them, if we could run our horses every hour, we would if they're <laughs> ready. But, you know, these horses tell us they have timeouts. We don't want to get them hurt. At the end of the day, when we go over there to make our mark, you know, we want to think we have total strength in that individual. And uh, that's like Whitehall. We have a stable a roster now of 20 horses, mm -hmm. which I'm proud to say, and 12 are two-year-olds. And we've only raced four of our two-year-olds so far, but we had four races, and they were big for us at Saratoga. Mm -hmm. I was proud of them. Our first race, we won right out of the box. And then we had three of our two-year-olds. We took two seconds and a third. So we think out of our crop that we're going to have definitely some strength here in the future. We can't wait to run some of these back. We're going to have some big races between now and the end of the year, also with some others that haven't started, mm -hmm. plus to get our new ones. But uh, as far as the Zenyatta race goes, as an owner, like I can tell you when, you, when you care, I think the more horses I've owned, you put your heart and soul into it. And, you know, you got to wait your turn. <clears throat> You're looking for that one bright spot, mm -hmm. and it's going to come. If, if, you, you know, if you pay your dues and you invest and, you do the right things by your race horses. I think, and we're buying quality. You know, we're buying horses between fifty and two hundred something thousand. So the pedigree's there. But that, you know, I, me personally, I think if you ran the races a few times, that Zenyatta, I felt with a little more would have done it. But when I looked how far back she was, it was frightening from that overhead right. view, mm -hmm. right. and it was just like unimaginable. But she's the real deal, you know. It, I guess it's sad in a way, but on the other hand, you got to give that other horse credit. That mm -hmm. Claiborne family's been in it a hundred years. It's I think it's their anniversary, and you know they stepped it up. So you know it, it was good for the sport. It, you know, there's a, there are a lot of things we, we can talk, and we will talk uh, about uh, the multitude of factors that go into being able to win a race, and the factors that prevent you from being able to win a race. I mean, the bottom line is that, uh, you know, there's a horse for the course angler. You know, she lost to a horse who loves the track. She, uh, first time over the track. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take a look at uh, the Breeders' Cup uh, uh, races, horses with experience over the track race pretty well. Uh, horses new to the track, maybe not so well. Uh, it's not always that a horse can just come in and jump up and run their best race. And, and so there's lots, there's lots of factors. You know, we always say here that one of the toughest things to do is to win a horse race right. when everything is right. And how often is everything 
Right. And perfect. Nick? Yeah, and no, no question about it. And, and I think that, you know, we'll get into the uh, Breeders' Cup a little later. But, Jim, I think that, you know, yesterday shows what horse racing has been in the past, what it can be today, you know, under the right circumstances, and what maybe it, it will see a little bit more of in the future, particularly here in New York now that the uh, VLT issue seems to be uh, solved and moving forward. Yeah, and you were talking uh, off air about, about Linda's comments on, uh, on going forward with the VLTs as an owner and uh, getting right. partnerships going. Right. No, I'll kind of give you an overview on that and just tell you a little bit about where we are right today mm -hmm. at Whitehall. First, I would like to congratulate our trainers, Seth and Linda. Mm -hmm. Seth Benzel, he came in second, big Breeders' Cup race for him. And uh, Linda Rice had, had one in there. So I, I think it goes to show you, you know, our total team. You know, we got some good people with us, and uh, I do congratulate them. But Linda Rice the other day was telling me wherever she's been recently, she's been to some of the, the sales. And she goes, Jim, I'm really, I'm really fired up because I, all of a sudden I see a big turn. There's optimism there. Mm -hmm. And it won't take too long, like you said, Nick, backstage too, that these VLTs, that revenue is going to kick in. So it's a great time. If you, if you looked at yesterday's racing, the Zenyatta story, the Secretariat movie out there. And who would want to be a piece of that, right? Right. We get some revenue here in New York. But, but Whitehall, I've got a nice thing to offer you the, this morning. If you look at our website, which I wish you would, mm -hmm. uh, www.whitehallstable.com, we're, we're going to have a free raffle, and we're going to give away one free share of our Read the Footnotes Philly. Anybody that takes a Whitehall partnership between now and the end of the year, you're going to qualify to win that raffle. A share price in, in that Philly is 11500 So we're looking for investors, you know. Knowing what I know, if you could come with Whitehall Stable, our young horses are going to step up here. We got a great cross-section. I've said it before. There's a lot of there's a lot of people forming their own little LLC groups. You know, we start around the $10,000 range. So we're seeing, we pick away at them. We get one here and one there, but, but we're, we're looking for that support. You know, we need revenue in this game. Whitehall come in to really try to do something for the people. We're down to earth, we're honest. Don't be afraid, you know, to talk to us. You know, we'd love to work with you. We're all here on the East Coast. You can see our horses, you know, Dr. Eisman at our training center, but we just got some beautiful horses coming up, and I, I, I can't stress it enough that I'd love to see you all try to come with Whitehall. Now, uh, you got some races coming up. Uh, you know, you, you had uh, you, you said you're going to get a couple of your two-year-olds, um, maybe a couple of runs in New York, and then you're heading down to, uh, you're going to get some runs at, at Gulfstream. And um, um, so what do, what do folks got? What can folks look forward to in terms of Whitehall's horses running in the near future? Okay. Just to give you a few examples on that, we will have a lot of horses down in Florida to run at Gulfstream starting the first of the year. Like, for instance, we've shipped um, Mr. Our Mr. Pippet. Mm -hmm. That's our Tappet Colt. He's already down at Palm Meadows. We've shipped our uh, Malibu Moon Philly Malibu Spices down there. We're going to have a big race coming up with a horse that ran real big at Saratoga named Associate mm -hmm. by Wando. He's, he's, we're targeting his race November 20th. Linda wants to run him back one mile on the turf at Aqueduct. That's exciting. We've got a beautiful Henny Hughes Colt. He's in his, I think, his fourth breeze named Quick to Strike. We paid a lot for him. He was one of the fastest at the Calder sale. And uh, we think he could really be something. He's going to race between now and the end of the year. We got a lovely New York Freud filly named Flirtatious Spring. Mm -hmm. Linda loves her. We're high on her. And uh, I still have a couple shares left in her. I, I really would suggest somebody to jump up on her because they'll get, they're going to get action almost immediately. And we think when she's three, she's going to make her big mark, particularly in New York. Mm -hmm. We got another New York filly, Bandini's Diamond, that's back. She's at Palm Meadows. We'll either race her at Gulfstream or bring her back up to Aqueduct. We, we've got a couple other horses right up here at Aqueduct that should run another nice colt named Norwich Cadet. And then some of our new yearlings, we love them at the training center. We got a beautiful colt named Buddy Jones. We mm -hmm. got a lot of symbolism with him. It's a friend of ours that got very sick that we care a lot about. He's like family. We named that horse after him. It's kind of touching. But he's by Ghost Zapper, and Dr. Eisman loves this colt already at the training center. Maybe there's a little fate there. But um, 
this Buddy Jones, he, he looks really nice. He, he's got a lot of confidence already. He's running around the racetrack. We got a beautiful new colt by Gone West, a pension Gone West. Our colt's name is Gallant Breeze, a lovely pedigree. I mean, the dam side, I think, made a half a million dollars. Hope for a breeze. We, did, we just love our horses. We got the, the big sales topper we bought, the Medallia Dora Colt, main principal. He hasn't run yet. You know, he's told us he's going to take time. He's this big. He's got that big overstride. He growthy. Out. He's a growthy horse. Yeah. But we're going <laughs> to, I'm telling you, we're going to make our mark bigger and bigger. But right now, I, I just want everybody to know we got a great program. I'd love to see us come in to get in on the raffle. We're, we're going to, it's a privilege to be able to give a horse share away to, you know, somebody that's given us that right support and backing okay. us up. Jim, Jim uh, you know, if, if there's anybody out there that watched the Breeders' Cup yesterday, you know, and hasn't yet uh, gotten into the horse ownership uh, part of the game, I'll, I'll give them an example of w what it's like to be in, uh, connected with a good horse. And that was when they showed, uh, you know, the aftermath of Goldakova winning the Breeders' Cup mile yesterday. Okay. I don't know if you saw it or not, but there was a scene where her groom ran out onto the dirt track, you know, the, uh, on the outside of the turf track and started running down oh, the track. Oh, I saw that. That was you know, awesome. I mean, I mean, <laughs> that that so, guy was going, yeah, yeah. You know, so, so that, that's an example of what it's like, oh, yeah. you know, when you get involved with a winning, winning racehorse. Oh, I, I, it's unbelievable, oh. just the feeling. The one other thing, I just want to make one other final point, and I, you won't see it good here, but... They came out with a new farm bill and a stimulus bill, and there's wonderful new four-year depreciation for young racehorses. So you mean there's 